Hello internet and welcome back to the dungeon. Today in my video I'm going to show you guys how I made this neat gnomish home for my game. I hope you guys enjoy the video. If you do please like, share and subscribe and without too much further ado let's jump into it. So to get started what you need to do is first of all make your base. I do this from green MDF, the best type of MDF in my view because it doesn't warp when in contact with water. So I first take a box cutter and bevel the edges roughly and use some sandpaper to smooth it out. When this is done, I take a pencil and simply draw out the construction plan for the hill and the stone fence that surrounds the garden of the Snowmish home. I also make sure to mark out where I'm gonna put the gate so that I don't accidentally fence up the entire yard. When this is done, I take some pieces of XPF and I create the rough shape of the hill, making sure to leave one side of it completely straight, just like a cliff, so that I can create the building front directly on the hillside. Once the glue dries, I take this Sharpie and I draw out the wood structure plan for where I want all the beams, planks, doors, and windows to be on this building face. I eyeball the plan using only a small no miniature from, from my game to make sure I get the proportions right. You don't have to measure it out. This is, this is actually the fun part where you don't have to overthink it. Once the plan is ready, I start creating the beams and planks for my building front. I do this using the same XPF and I cut out long strips. Some measure five by five millimeters to create the beams for my building front and some measure out as two by 20 millimeters to create planks for the walls themselves and the doors and windows. To create the wooden texture, I simply take my scalpel and run it in wavy lines along the strips, not going deeper than two millimeters on, on either side of the planks or beams, but I make sure to go on every side of the beam. When I have all the cuts in place, I simply take a steel brush and run it along the, these grain lines that I just made to really emphasize the wood texture. When I have all the beams and planks ready, mind you, they're not cut to size yet. I simply take them and place them over the building sketch on the wall itself and cut them in place and glue them immediately where they're supposed to be. Now, wear marks give everything a much more realistic feel. So when I create the door, I simply take the plank piece and cut it to size to fill the entire door. This, mind you, this is a small door. Mark out plank lines in this wide 20 millimeter strip and then take my X-Acto knife and simply wear down the bottom of the door to make it seem as if this door has been in use for a while and it's starting to rot at the bottom. Now, mind you that God is in the details. So I take these small pieces of cardboard that I cut out of a cereal box to create the hinges. These are simply three millimeters by 20 millimeter strips of cardboard that I took, cut wedges at, at the edges, and then use this small ball tool to, to create uh, the impression of bolts that hold these to the door. Later on, I'm gonna color these in a metallic color to really make them seem like hinges. Now that my building front is ready, I start working on the stone fence for the garden itself. I made out of small XPF blocks of five by 10 millimeters. I simply cut a long strip of 10 millimeter by five, and then I use a box cutter knife to cut these small blocks. Now you can use them as is because their edges are too straight and you lose a lot of the realistic feel. So to get that worn down feel, I simply put them in a small can with some pebbles I took from my yard and I shake them silly till they're worn down. Once I'm tired shaking them, I simply pour them out on the table, separate the rocks from the, from the blocks, and they're ready to use. I take this silicon-based glue, put it exactly on the line that I marked out earlier, and I simply glue the bricks in place, making sure not to cover up where my gate is supposed to be. Also, because this is a gnomish house, I make sure not to make the wall too tall. Otherwise, and it'll seem kind of out of proportion, for this construction. 
Now, once the wall is ready, I start working on the gate itself. I take the leftover pieces of the beams that I made earlier, and I cut them three centimeter pieces, and I glue them in place and the edges of the yard fence, making sure to make them roughly the same height. When this is done, I take small pieces from my leftover planks, cut them into short strips, place them uh, parallel to each other, roughly at the height that I want to get the gate to be, and then I glue a third bit diagonally between the opposing edges, just like in the video. This is going to make up the gate itself. When this is dry, I simply pick it up and glue it in place, closing out the gate. Now I also took some of my leftover bricks and kind of covered up these steps that I made leading from the yard up onto the roof. While going to Ireland a couple of years back, I noticed that some of these old country houses way, way out back seem to have this grass roof that animals can go up on to eat and graze. And I thought this was a really neat idea for this gnomish house and I wanted to incorporate it into this build. So why not give these animals and the farmer that lives there an easy access to his roof via these stairs. Once the glue is dried, I take some filler and I use it to cover up any seams left in the XBF and at the bottom between the wall and the MDF itself. And I also put in this chimney flute to hint at the larger home that is underneath the hill itself. I wait a little till the filler hardens and then I use some sandpaper to smooth out the hill. Mind you, you don't have to smooth it that much because we're going to cover everything up with static grass. So this is really a pet peeve for me that I don't like roughed out filler. But you could actually leave it as is if you're going to cover everything up that it grass or with flock. At this point, I thought that it would be really neat to have a, a stepping stone path between the door of the house and the gate. So I took out one of these strips of 2 by 20 millimeter XBF, roughed it up with the tinfoil ball, and then cut it into small uneven pieces and simply glued them in place between the door and the gate. When the glue was dry on the stepping stone path, I took some watered down PVA and smeared it all over the yard, being careful not to cover the stepping stones themselves, but rather getting some PVA between the stepping stones. Then I took some sand I picked up at the beach and spread it in the yard, really trying to get it to stick to all the PVA. Now I did this in part to fill out the yard itself, but also because I wanted the stepping stones to seem a bit sunken, just like stepping stones in my yard. I shake out the excess sand and make sure that sand is getting in between those stepping stones. I do this sand treatment not only for the yard, but rather for the entire area around the stone fence. And then I let the PVA cure. Once the PVA has cured, I take some Black Mod Podge and give the entire model a base coat. For those of you who don't know, Black Mod Podge is simply a mixture of matte Mod Podge with some black acrylic. Once the base coat has cured, and this actually happens pretty quickly with Mod Podge, I start giving unique and different base colors for each part of the model. I give the hill itself a base coat in burnt umber, any stone or brick, a base coat in dark gray, and all the timber, a coat of burnt sienna. Now, I'm not covering up the hinges, so I'm, I'm gonna give the metal bits another coat of gunmetal gray later. So at this point, it's not that important. Once the base coats have dried, I take a deer foot brush and put on lighter shades of those same colors and put a lighter shade of light brown and light gray on those relevant pieces. Gray for the stones and brownish for any bits of wood or timber. Now to give the stonework a bit more variance, I colored specific stones in different shades of brown and gray. This makes it seem as if these stones were collected from the surrounding area and not quarried from some central quarry, like in a town, but rather in a more rustic setting where people make their houses out of things that they just found lying around or out of some old ruins from this area. You could actually incorporate this as part of the narrative of the area. That these houses were made out of the blocks and stonework of some ancient ruin and they might have carried off some of its power. That'd be a neat idea. Now that all the paints have dried, 
it's time to move on to the grasses, trees, and flowers on the model. So the first thing to do is lay down a first coat of dark green two millimeter of grass. To do this, I smear the entire hillside and yard in watered down PVA and then use my static grass applicator to seed the entire hillside in dark green. Once this is done, I take my spray bottle with some watered down PVA, spray the hillside haphazardly and lay down a lighter and less concentrated layer of green three millimeter static grass, light green static grass. And once the glue has cured, it's time to move on to gluing in the trees and shrubbery. To do this, I take a round file, roughly the diameter of the tree trunk that I'm gonna put in, and I simply drill a hole for the tree where I want to put it. I get these trees from AliExpress. They're cheap, they look good enough for my purposes, but most importantly, they're varied and I can use them to create different scenarios, both for village life and for forest terrain. So I'm pretty partial to them myself. So I just go and drill one hole after another, putting in some glue in the hole and then putting in, pushing in the trunk to where I want it to be. And that's it. When all the trees are glued in, I take my paintbrush, speckle the grass lightly, and then use these colored bits of foam, pushing them in with my thumb into where the glue is to create patches of wildflowers growing on top of the hills. Another really easy way to do this is using a spray bottle to simply spray the hill. Though I would recommend caution when doing this because you might spray a bit too much as I did here, but actually managed to get away with it rather nicely without creating too much of a mess. Now, the only step I forgot to mention that I did here was spraying the entire model when I was done with some uh, matte lac, some matte lacquer to really keep everything in place and help the static grass persist for longer. And that's it, thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please like, share and subscribe and leave a comment down below about videos you'd like me to make or models you want to see. And I'll see you guys next week. Till then. Happy gaming.